experiment A2 covers the remainder of the, of the first of the required practicals. So what I'm going to do is make up a solution here, and that solution is going to have sodium carbonate in it. So before I do anything else with this flask, I'm going to label it up um, with my name and what it's got in it, um, the approximate concentration I struggle with at the moment, but I'll write that in later, and today's date, so I'm going to write a date on that as well, just to make sure that that flask is now allocated to me and my solution. So what I've got in this beaker here is washing soda. Now washing soda is NH2CO3.xH2O, so it contains sodium carbonate and a number of moles of water of crystallisation. Now washing soda is interesting in, in its formula because it loses water of crystallisation over time. So very fresh samples of washing soda would have a particular number of waters of, of crystallisation, but over time they lose those to the atmosphere. And so the aim of this experiment is to work out X in this example, so work out actually how many waters of crystallisation remain in this example of the washing soda. So to do that, what I'm going to do is use um, a method for making a standard solution. So I'm going to make a, a solution carefully with very well-known quantities and then titrate that solution against hydrochloric acid um, in the burette in order to calculate the concentration. Then I can work backwards to see how many moles of washing soda, how many moles of water were in the original beaker. Things that I need then in order to do this. So I've got various bits of apparatus here. Uh, this is called a volumetric flask or a graduated flask. This is another graduated piece of glassware which has a little mark on it and therefore we work with the bottom of the meniscus on the mark. More about that later on. I've got a clean beaker here, a uh, stirring rod, weighing boat, that's this thing that's, that goes onto the balance, um, a spatula, the washing soda and the funnel. So this is just part one of this particular practical where we're making the solution up. First of all then, I'm tearing the balance, so the balance is reading at 0, 0.00 grams. And I'm going to pop on that balance an empty weighing boat. So the empty weighing boat mass is 1.01 plus and minus 0.01 grams. Now this time for the uncertainty, uh, the scale here is a digital scale. And so the digital scale is reading out 1.01, but that could be as high as almost 1.02 or as low as almost 1.00. Because it's digital, it works on a logic which says yes or no. It's a TTL type logic. So we just estimate this as the final division. So this is plus or minus 0 0.01 grams that we've weighed down. Okay? So the mass of the empty weighing boat is that. Then I need to add some solid to that. The method says approximately 3.5 grams. So I'm going to take that weighing boat off the top of the balance. Notice I've done that so that if I spill some washing soda, it's a bit of a pain because it spills on the bench here, but I can clear it up. If it spills on the balance top, I have to clear it up and start everything again because it then invalidates the measurement. So about 3.5 grams of that, plus the 1.01 uh, grams, sorry, should, should take us up to a total mass of about 4.5 grams. So I'm just going to add one spatula and see how much that is. Okay, that's about 0.6 grams. So... I can afford to add a few more spatulas. There. See what that says? 4.55, close enough. 4.55 grams. So I'm just tapping that off and I'll sit that out of the way. So 4.55 grams. I shall now write inside here. So that's 4.55. That's the mass of the weighing boat plus the solid. Uh, again, plus or minus 0 0.01 grams for the uncertainty. I'm going to use a weighing by difference method, which means that I know the total mass of the weighing boat and the solid. I'm then going to tip the solid into a clean beaker, like so, and record the mass of the weighing boat and any residue. So that is coming out at 1.02 grams. 1.02 plus or minus 0 0.01 grams. And from that you can perhaps see by inspection that 0 0.01 grams worth of residue has, has actually remained stuck to that, that uh, weighing boat because the new mass of that is 1.02. So that's absolutely fine, I don't do anything with that because I've quantified exactly the mass of solid that's gone from the weighing boat into this beaker. So I don't need to touch that anymore.
So step one, weigh in by difference. Step two, I'm going to take the solid and I'm going to add probably about 100 centimetres cubed of water to this beaker. So I'm just adding about 100 centimetres cubed, importantly distilled water, to the beaker like that. And I'm going to take a stone rod and I'm going to stir it until that has all dissolved. So now all of that solid is dissolved. The aim of this whole experiment is to make sure every single last mole of solid that was in that sample ends up in this flask. And so it's really important to be careful with the apparatus. The first thing I'm going to do is just rinse off the stirring rod into the beaker like that so that any of the solution that was stuck to the stirring rod has now been rinsed in. The second thing I'm going to do is take the top off this clean volumetric flask and take a funnel, I'm just holding it up here so that we don't get an airlock and very carefully pour that solution in, making sure nothing spills, nothing splashes, like so. And again, I'd like to rinse the beaker with distilled water, but most importantly, I'm making it clear, especially if I have to write this down anywhere, that the rinsings are going in the flask. So the, the wording to use for that process is transfer the solution with rinsings into the volumetric flask. So the beaker's had a rinse, the stone rod's had a rinse, and finally that funnel surface is having a rinse. Now whilst I'm doing this, I'm just being really careful to keep an eye on the level of this solution because the solutions are moving up the flask, I don't want to overshoot the mark so I have to start all over again. So in order to top this up, I'm going to use that beaker that I just freshly rinsed because let's face it, it's pretty clean now. I'm going to pour some of the distilled water into that beaker like so and just very carefully pour this in until the solution is approaching but not touching that mark. I'm just going to get a drop in pipette to finish this method off. So I'm taking distilled water and I'm pouring it carefully. Notice I'm holding the flask so that it's a bit more difficult to accidentally knock it over. So I'm looking after this solution that I've spent time and effort making. Topping the flask up like so. Continuing to top the flask up until it's coming up towards the mark, but a few centimetres short of the mark. Then take a drop in pipette. Notice I'm bending my knees so that my eye is at the same level as the graduation mark and the flask is sitting flat on the desk. And then just add carefully from the drop in pipette the solution until the bottom of that meniscus sits just on the line. Just like when we do pipetting, just like when reading the burette, the bottom of the meniscus is the place to look. Just adding a couple more drops. And one more, and that's just sitting on the line. So the final step then is to pop the stopper onto the flask, hold it on, and then invert the flask several times to mix that solution thoroughly so that the concentration of that solution is consistent throughout the solution. So key points then, first thing to do, weigh by difference. So I took the weighing boat and the solid, transferred the solid to a clean beaker, took the mass of the weighing boat and the residue. So the difference between those gives the accurate mass of the solid used. Second thing, dissolved solid in distilled water until all of the solid was dissolved. Transfer that solution with rinsings into a volumetric flask of whichever size, this one 250 centimetres cubed. Make it up carefully to the mark with distilled water, put the stopper on, and then invert that flask several times to make sure that the solution is thoroughly mixed. So that's part one of this practical and then part two of the practical involves titrating this solution with hydrochloric acid into the burette this time to work out the concentration using just the same titration techniques as we've met before.